So there's three things that have to be plugged in. Power, the scavenger, which got pulled apart inappropriately yesterday. So does everybody see what happened here? There's no end on here. Button should have been pushed and that should have been it. Okay, so you should have one end that's got this end and the other end has the other end. You don't just yank it apart. They actually click together. Okay, you all heard the click. The other thing is the oxygen. And then short. So I can't do what I'm doing. That's right. <laughs> you keep going until it stops. So it's just like when you go to hook up your tires and you're pumping them up. Oh, when you're first putting it on, it mm -hmm. starts to let a little air out mm -hmm. until the, it compresses the little valve properly and seals it. <laughs> so now my machine is ready to go. Now, where what is this actually powering? Does anybody know? The up and down motion. Nope. What is this black wire powering? The uh, No. The CO2 stuff or whatever? The no. Scavenger. Yes. So we have to always make sure the scavenger is on. There's a little green light on the back to say whether it's on or not, and there's a switch underneath. Now, in this case, this scavenger actually vibrates a little bit, so you hear it when I turned it on. Um, the other one you don't hear as much, but the way you can tell just by looking is there is a little green light on the back and it would be on if it was on. Uh, so ensuring that your scavenger is on because obviously if you don't have it on it's not going to do its job. <clears throat> the next thing we need to do is to look at the parts and pathways. So let me grab my tube so that we can Okay, so we'll start on this side. Does anybody know what this side of the inside machine is called? Rebreathing or non rebreathing? Non rebreathing. So we use our Bane system on the non rebreathing, and this is for any animal that's under 10 kilos. Okay, I'm going to hook it up. And now, I, what else do I need to hook to this in order to make it work? The patient. Okay, that end, yes. Sure, the patient's on this end. What else do we need? We need a reservoir bag, absolutely. What else do we need? Oxygen. Mm. Now, somebody took this apart yesterday. This white piece shouldn't actually be in the hose here. It should be in my tube here. I'll just put it in there. So that's my oxygen. And I know that's my oxygen because I can follow it back and it goes back here. And this has fresh gas here. Okay? So I know that's my oxygen. What is this piece here? This line and this piece that's hooked into the oxygen line. Where does this go? The fuel alarm. It does. It goes to the alarm. So that alarm would tell us if there was too much pressure going to the patient. And how do we know uh, how much pressure is going to the patient? The, the, yes, the manometer. Okay, so this manometer goes with this system, this one goes with this system. What do we need to do in order to do a leak test? Can I do a leak test right now? I've got it all hooked up. What am I forgetting? You have to close the pop-off valve. If you've got another body beside you, they can just push it down and hold it, right? If you're by yourself, though, you're going to have to screw it down to shut it. Then I include the end of my tube. And I can just turn my oxygen on. It doesn't really matter what you turn it to. You're just letting it fill until what? When do I stop filling? 15. Uh, in this case, we're going to go 20. Okay. We talked about in cats, we don't want to go over 15. But when we're doing our leak test, we want to go as high as at least 20, just to ensure that there is um, proper holding of pressure. So I'm looking at it. Is it moving at all? We're going to wait about 30 seconds to ensure that it doesn't move. If it is moving, I'm going to try and fake move it if I can. Is it 
moving? Yeah. Okay, so if it's moving, I'm going to put it to what? No. How many mils of oxygen um, to check for a leak that's negligible? 300. Right, so I'm going to put it at 300. If the, if the pressure gauge starts going back up again, what does that mean? Up, what does it mean if the pressure gauge starts going back up again when I have a leak? Just negligible. Negligible. That's right. It means that I'm not going to worry about the leak that's in the system. But if I was, if the pressure was dropping and I had it at 300 again, and it keeps dropping, what does that mean? Needs we means we have a leak somewhere in the system that we have to find. Okay, what do I do now that I've done my leak test? Do I just squeeze it with my hand over here? What do I have to do first? Open the pop-up, pop that's right. And part of me teaching you to squeeze the bag is you have to remember to open the pop-up because the worst thing we can do is walk away and let the air go into the environment because we may not have actually open the pop-up. But if you go to squeeze the bag and you haven't opened the pop off, you'll know it, right? You'll feel the pressure, you'll see the pressure, and that'll be a reminder. Because if you come and you hook your patient up and your pop off is remaining closed, then you could uh, rupture their lungs. So you could kill your patient. So it's really important to always ensure that pop off is open. And most machines out there don't have this handy dandy little feature of push. Most of them you have to screw them down. And I don't think I've ever seen an alarm out in practice to say the pressure is too high. So it's an add-on feature that this machine has. Um, most of the alarm is, oh my God, open the pop off. That's your alarm. Because somebody else has just noticed that your bag is All right? All right, so that's my vein system. So what is this thing? ISO. ISO, but what is this thing? Oh, vaporizer, right? What is this? Uh, oxygen. oxygen. Flow meter, right? What's the minimum we run our oxygen at? One liter. Okay. So that's the vein system. Nobody sees this. It's only on tape. Only on, on <laughs> video. <laughs> somebody really cranked it on there, I wouldn't normally have done that. <laughs> so it should still be in there. And so when you're, I wanted you guys to see that it needs to be hooked up and it isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. You have to kind of feed it back and forth, which is probably why people were like, oh, let's just leave that like that on there. Oops, I'm standing, I'm trying to stand sideways instead of in front of it and I can't get my correct angle on it. And the other tubes are falling. There we go. So if I was setting it up initially in the morning, I would have to feed that on there. So it being good and tight is a good thing. And again, it wants to come off again. So I'm just going to fix it. All right. So that's our vein system. What's the other system we have? What system is this? It's a rebreathing system, and why is it a rebreathing system? Because we, we reuse the oxygen. You're reusing some of the oxygen and ISO that the patient is breathing out. So it goes to the soda lime, gets filtered, and the patient can reuse some of the anesthetic that they're using. It helps to reduce costs if you can reuse some of the uh, isochlorine. Does anybody know what circuit this is? I heard it, I think, didn't I? Yeah. F circuit, yes. So we're gonna hook up our F circuit. All right, am I ready to go to the patient yet? Why not? Hook up oxygen, that's right. So here's my oxygen for this side of the system, okay? I need to disconnect my vein system and reconnect with my F circuit. Now, one thing with this F circuit, 
It's, it sounds really cool to hear the click. So there's our click. Oh, yay, it's hooked up. The problem is every time you click it, there's this little red O-ring on here. They get broken easily. So, and because these machines are used so much with students taking them apart, putting them back together again, we go through these silly little O-rings like crazy. So it's not a bad idea to just push the button so that there's not as much force against it and then just give it a little pull. So you notice that time you didn't actually hear the click, right? All right, so now my oxygen's hooked up. Am I ready to go do my leak test now? Doc says no. You need your, your uh, bag. What is this called? Reservoir bag, or you'll hear it called a rebreathing bag as well, but reservoir bag. So I've got that on there. Am I good to go now? Yes, I am. So I'm going to include my end. Now, there is a little handy dandy function on this machine. It's called an oxygen flush. You would never use the oxygen flush if you were actually hooked up to a patient. So you can use it for things like this where I'm just filling my bag. I can. After anesthetic, you remember we would leave our patients on for five minutes of just oxygen. What I might do is disconnect from my patient, evacuate my bag, flush the system, evacuate, and then hook back up to the patient. Okay? Do you ever, like, not use there any, like, I know it might be a question, but, like, something else other than oxygen that you use, like an oxygen and, like, yes, there are. Together or something? Well, we're using oxygen with ISO, which is yeah. our anesthetic, but there's also... Um, nitrous oxide. Some older units will use nitrous oxide as well. Okay, so I'm going to use my flush, but because there's, you're never supposed to use it with a patient hooked up, the alarm is automatically going to scream at me. You hear this, the alarm screaming? Everybody hear the alarm going off? It's not really loud in this one for some reason. You hear the beep sound? Yeah. You hear it? Okay, so what did I forget to do? Because my bag's not holding. Close your pop-off valve. Yay, close my pop-off valve. And this is the pop-off valve for this side of the machine. So now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to watch my manometer here. Is there a leak? Yes. Yes, there is. So I'm going to turn it up to 300. What do we feel about the leak? Negligible. Negligible. That's right, because we turned it to 300, it continued to gain pressure, we're not going to worry about it. We still might go around and just tighten things. Nine times out of ten, in this side of the system, the leak has something to do with your scavenger. Or your soda line, sorry. Um, because you have to take it off and put it on when you're changing the soda line granules. And sometimes if you don't get it seated properly, it's not as tight as it should be. So now I have air in the bag. Do I just let go of the end and let it go in the environment? Yeah. <laughs> what do we do? That's right. That's our check to make sure that we've opened our pop off. Squeeze my bag and send everything in there. These are flutter valves. You don't necessarily need to know that, but they're for inspiration and expiration, so you can actually see them moving when the patient's breathing. Okay. The other system we use, so we use the F circuit when they're 10 to 20 kilos. We then go to the circle system if they're over 20 kilos. And it's basically the same idea. Oh, look at me throwing things around again. So it's un under 10, 10 to 20, and over and this 20. This is over 20, yeah. And it just stands to reason it kind of looks like a big circle, doesn't it? Mm. Hooked up? Maybe, yeah. All right. So there's our circle system again. It's hooked up the same way, same leak test, the whole nine yards. All right? Anytime we change it or anything on the machine, going from one side to the other, we're doing leak tests. If for some reason I hooked up an F circuit and then we decided, no, we want to go with the circle, I can leak test it again. How do I know when to change the soda line? When it changes colors. When it changes colors, does it stay changed? No. Not necessarily, no. So if, my, if I saw a color change on Friday afternoon and I came back Monday morning, probably there isn't a color change anymore. What if I'm not the one in surgery in Monday morning? Right? So how do we change the line? We unscrew, wearing our glasses, our Googles, our mask, and um, what? Gloves. Yeah. Three Gs. Triple G, as opposed to triple B. All right, so here's our uh, 
Vin Diesel. My head went to Vin Diesel. I don't know. Uh, soda lime. How do we know that if it's exhausted, if there's no color change? It's to do texture. It does have to do a texture. If, if you pick it up and you squish it between your fingers and it's brittle, then it needs to be changed. Often we do a partial change, so about a third, every six to eight hours of use. So we'll just take two bags inside one another, dump out a third of it, and then replace the top third, and then uh, we'll put a date, our initials, and that we did a third of the change. Most places will do a full change on a regular schedule. So if they do lots and lots of surgeries, maybe they do a full change at the end of every week. Um, if they do if an average amount, maybe they do it once a month. But most of them have a schedule that they do it on. And then you can just, after so many hours, you can do a partial change if you want. Go ahead. Can it really harm the patient? If it's like one well, day, like, but you said you see it like on a Friday and then a Monday. Imagine your like, aquarium yeah. that has a blocked filter, okay. mm -hmm. right? It's not going to filter anything. But it's not going to like affect them right away? It's like, going to affect the now. level of anesthesia that you're going to need uh, okay. and how your patient is managing under anesthesia. Okay. All right, so I make sure that it sits down nice and flush, wheel it up. And the thing is, when you're here, you want to be at eye level because there's a little rubber seal there. And sometimes, even though you've got it in and you think it's level, you see how much tilt there is to this little black piece? That can affect how well it sits in there. So I like to manually keep my hand on the canister. And then you just hand tighten. Go ahead. Uh, you aren't supposed to touch them. I don't know if they're a carcinogen or not, um, but they certainly, you're not supposed to manually uh, handle them, and I'm not sure if it's just a function of the waste gap that's potentially on them. So hand tight, because you don't want to over crank it. That's probably one of the biggest things that we find with our machines, um, with students playing with them, is that everybody gets overzealous and cranks them down really tight, and then we break our seals. Okay, so that's our machine. Any questions? Yes. Okay. If it changes color, what color does it change? And like, do you just see it like from here? Would you just see that it's you not would, the same color? You could just see it from there. You could, you might see it if you uh, took it off, it may be down inside it. So it's a good idea to dig down when you break the glove on and make sure there isn't a color change down. Um, and the color change depends on the manufacturer. There are some now that, um, well, these guys would turn purple. Lavender. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there are others that start out the lavender color and will turn white. <coughs> Sorry. So it really depends on the manufacturer. And there are others that don't have any color change at all, depending on who it is. So you can't rely on color change. You want to rely more on hours of anesthesia and uh, texture and date. And you said you not change the whole thing, like you just only take out what's bad, or? Uh, you change about a third every six to eight hours of use. Okay. Um, so some places don't bother with that. They just go, you know what? The end of every week, we're just going to change it. The end of every two weeks, you know, you know, that sort of thing. So it depends on the clinic, but uh, gold standard is at least a third every six to eight hours. Any other questions? Yeah. So the side, if it goes too much, you can like blow the patient's lungs, right? Either. Either side. Okay. Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, it's when the pressure. So when you're reading the gauge here, so for the vein system, we don't want to ever. We want to. We're ideally looking for about 12 millimeters of mercury pressure to the cat's lungs. Um, so we're usually trying to go between 10 and 15. On this side, you can go anywhere between 10 and 20 safely. We have the alarms set so that they go off earlier as opposed to later, um, just so that it gives you an opportunity to go, wait, there's an alarm going off, I need to react. Um, and uh, But in, in real life, you would just be monitoring that uh, on your own without an alarm. So would you, would you have to like, take the tooth out or just take it off and then let it go? Nine times out of ten, the reason the pressure has gone really, really high is somebody's forgotten to open the pop off. So the minute you open the pop off, it immediately starts sucking it out. Okay. So it's like somebody sitting there blowing in your face and not letting you blow out. And they're just like, and you're like, hmm. and you can't do anything about it, right? Yeah, bicycle bump. Yeah. 
Yeah, you got her. Uh, okay, so ISO for changing ISO. <coughs> Out of my way. So here's our ISO key. It would be hooked to our ISO bottle, right? The key has two little holes. Purple goes with purple. Can only fit in this hole for isochlorine. So keeps it fairly safe. So assuming my bottle's attached here, I'm going to look down here and see if I need any ISO. I could add a little bit up to the line there. It's a little bit low. If I was going to do that, I would undo the top screw, take the uh, key out. The key only fits one way, so you can see that. It doesn't go in any other way. And these little holes line up with the little holes that are inside there. Stick the key in, tighten it. If this was hooked to a bottle, I would now tilt the bottle up, watching at eye level and fill it. When I'm done filling, I let it come back down, let the remainder run into the bottle, undo this, this little screw, take out your key, put this key back in. It, it can only go in one way as well. Tighten down your little knob, okay? Then you would make sure that you close this up, put, take this off your bottle, put it in uh, some sort of bag, and the lid back on your ISO fairly quickly because even with the lid off, you're allowing fumes to escape. Happy time. <laughs> Happy time. Wouldn't I wish. For all the ISO spills I've had, not me in particular, but students, it's like, okay, clear the room. Let's go. <laughs> um, and that's what we would do. If somebody, if something happened and you had an ISO spill, we would, we do have an ISO spill box, but to be perfectly honest, I'm not hanging about to do that. I'm leaving. See ya. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, I'm like, forget it, I'm not getting the respirator out and all that. If I had to, I guess I would, but I, most times it's just function of somebody has done something where they've either touched this knob or this knob, and they've let ISO drip out onto the uh, machine or on the floor a little bit, and we're all like, okay, let's just leave, it'll evaporate, and we'll come back in a few minutes. Um, I was going to say, like, all those, like, people in, like, yellow suits would have to come. <laughs> no, no hazmats, no hazmats, just usually uh, a little bit, and oftentimes I do the old grab a paper towel, throw it on it, and then I run out the door. <laughs> it's very technical, I know. <laughs> and then when I come back, I keep my mask on, I wipe everything down, I use gloves and what have you, and clean it up that way, but it's, it's usually there's so very little, because somebody's gone, oh my god, it's leaking, and we shut it off really quick, so it's not usually a whole bottle on the floor. It will happen, I know it will. No, it will be our class. No, it will be screwed everything yeah, else. Tuesday's class because we're better than that. Yeah. <laughs> if I was emptying this, I could actually empty my unit, but and that's what this bottom hole is for. That's why when you turn the screw, it does come out. If I was to turn the screw here, I could empty it back into the bottle, which is what I'll be doing later today. Any questions about that? These do need to be sent off for servicing, usually about once a month, or once a year, sorry, not once a month. Um, and they just come off the machine and I empty them, which is what I'll do later, package them all up and send them off and they'll calibrate them. Because you need to know that if I turn this little knobby to two, I'm actually giving them two, right? I don't wanna suddenly be thinking I'm giving them two when really it, I'm giving them only maybe one because it's plugged somewhere, it's not running properly. And all of a sudden, I'm running my animals, and I realize that, geez, I have to run all my animals at two and a half now. Like, what's going on? And it could very well be that this needs some servicing. Okay. So you always just automatically turn it to two? No, I just arbitrarily just pick two right now. Oh, okay. Um, what's that? I feel like I'm going to, like, kill a cat. Well, don't. <laughs> 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 no, Are all these instructions scared? somewhere? Yeah. 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 Yeah.